Hey gamers, I'm Amos McCainless and welcome back to the Gorilla Report. This week we're taking on the Covenant race yet again in Bungie's latest release, the highly anticipated Halo 3 ODST. Now pretty much every gamer out there will recognize Halo 3, the award-winning game that has sold millions of copies worldwide. And with over a million gamers still signing on to play the shooter every day, Bungie felt they needed a little update. Welcome to ODST, the newest addition to the Halo series. For the longest time now, Halo has been the face of the Xbox console, but with the releases of games such as Modern Warfare and World at War, some fans have been shifting corners. Many loyal Halo fans were looking towards ODST to bring their favorite franchise back into the spotlight, and that's exactly what Bungie attempted to deliver. Swaying a bit from the norm, you will take on the role of an orbital drop shock trooper, experiencing the battles of New Mombasa from perspective a little lower on the totem pole than Master Chief. So let's break this game down a little bit, shall we? Halo 3 ODST comes with two discs. The first disc is labeled Campaign, and the second disc is labeled The Complete Multiplayer Experience. Now looking at these two discs, you would expect to be getting twice the content as you would in a normal game, but we found that this was not completely true in this case. The first disc basically consists of the Campaign mode and the new Halo Gone Nazi Zombies co-op game called Firefight. The second disc, which should really be renamed to the completely unchanged multiplayer experience, or better yet, your second copy of Halo 3, consists of, well, Halo 3 with all the DLCs that you may or may not have purchased before, plus three more. But we'll get to that a little later. For now, let's just focus on disc one. Halo 3 ODST's campaign was really refreshing after the two year gap since the last game, and will be a treat to those diehard Bungie fans who consistently find themselves camping out for the releases of each new sequel. The story was slightly interesting, and this game did a great job at letting you step into your character's position as an ODST. The gameplay is not only innovative, but is pretty much just awesome overall. Not only are you equipped with a more badass version of the SMG, but you also get to carry around a pistol capable of sniping people as well, much like in the original Halo game. Also, there is a new thing called a visor for campaign play that is a hybrid of night vision and an edge catcher that makes picking out enemies a lot simpler. And yet again, we are unsurprised to say that this game's soundtrack was put together really well, and Bungie has never failed to make that a staple of their games. We enjoyed the campaign, but sadly it only told up to about six hours, and with no new multiplayer to back it up, we thought it could have had a little bit more depth. Another cool feature that was added to ODST is a game mode called Firefight. Firefight is basically Halo's rendition of World of War's Nazi Zombies or Gears of War 2's Horde, where you are challenged to take on wave after wave of Covenant forces, testing how long you can go without dying. Play this alone with friends online, but don't forget about the multiple Vidmaster challenges that await players who hit 200,000 points. Our only criticism for Firefight is that you can't matchmake online with players to find games of 4 more frequently. Instead, you have to count on having a few friends online that have ODST, and want to play with you, and you want to play with them, and they don't completely suck at Halo. A lot of things have got to go right for the firefight to be completely worth its value, and sadly, this could have all been avoided if Bungie just added a simple search for game button on the menu screen. But overall, it is still really fun to play solo, and will keep you playing no matter what. Other than the campaign and firefight, Disc 1 contains a theater mode like in Halo 3 where you can view footage from previous matches and upload to your file share. And there is a spot to download Intel audio files that add some depth to the story as you play along. Now let's take a brief look at Disc 2. When you first load Disc 2 into your Xbox 360 console, you'll be confronted with an all too familiar menu screen. In fact, this is the exact same menu screen that came with the Halo 3 game you may have had before, except it just says Mythic down in the bottom right hand corner to make it seem more worthwhile. Most people who invested their money into ODST had probably already invested a bit of money into the game just before, Halo 3, and they will be especially delighted to find out that all the money they spent on the heroic, legendary, and mythic map packs was now a pointless cause because now they have them all for free. After recognizing you spent so much money on DLCs for Halo 3, they will be even more disappointed to find out that half the game you just paid 60 bucks for, you already own. But hey, at least you got three new maps, and two copies of Halo 3. The three new maps that Bungie included in ODST are Longshort, Citadel, and Heretic. It's really important that people, even dedicated Halo fanboys, recognize that this game just isn't worth 60 bucks. Plain and simple, despite how cool some of the new features are that were added to the game, this has about the same amount of new content as one would expect to gain from a $20 or $30 DLC package. The only circumstances in which we can see ODST totaling up to $60 in value would be if either A, you never owned Halo 3, or B, you have a lot of money to get rid of and nothing else to spend it on. Simply speaking, it's nice if you got a few new maps for Halo 3, but when you just spent 60 bucks on this new exciting gameplay, who wants to revert back to the old? Overall, we feel that the campaign was really fun and the new weapons and visor were definitely cool add-ons, 
Well, that's exactly what this should be. An add-on, a DLC, not a $60 purchase. It seems that with this game, the more money you invest in the Halo 3 DLCs, the less ODST is worth your while. Considering that this was one of the most hyped up games of the year, we weren't blown away by what this had to offer, which is sad to hear considering we ourselves are huge fans of the Halo series. Just to recap, Halo 3 ODST provides a nice campaign edition for all super fans of the Halo series. Also, though there could have been a few improvements made to it, the new Firefight mode will keep gamers entertained for hours, working towards beating those Vidmaster challenges. But on the flip side, the lack of any real matchmaking style multiplayer was a real drawback, especially considering the work Bungie put into changing the Halo gameplay style could have paid off greatly. And when you get right down to it, this honestly only has enough content to be called the DLC, except it's not downloadable and DLCs generally don't carry around a $60 price tag. Our verdict, Halo 3 ODST has a good storyline campaign, but not a great storyline campaign, which is what you need if there's no new matchmaking to keep people playing online. Overall, ODST is just too lacking in value. Halo 3 ODST had a pretty cool campaign and included a few new features that we thought were really cool. But sadly, this highly anticipated game wasn't completely worth its hefty price tag, and for that reason alone, we were slightly disappointed. We would love to say that this game is worth a 9 rating, but the sheer fact that its content doesn't match its price tag is going to push it down to a 6.5. That was just Guerrilla Report's review of Halo 3 ODST. I'm Amos McCandless, reporting to you from the front lines of gaming.